Joshua, the sixth chapter, the first verse. Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out, no one came in. But the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have handed Jericho over to you with its king and valiant warriors. You shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do so for six days. Also seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. Then on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every one straight ahead. Then on the seventh day they got up early at the dawning of the day and marched around the city. The same way seven times only on that day did they march around the city seven times. And at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. I want to preach for a little bit this morning, don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. Amen. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your precious people. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here. Speak to us now through your servant in Jesus' name and everybody said amen. amen. Thank you for standing. God bless you. We've heard of people that had stunted growth people that we knew, our children, that we heard that their growth was stunted. And growth deficiency is what it is called many times. It's a, a shortage of certain things or certain things that, that uh, medical science has told us has caused that problem. One of them can be uh, emotional stress, poor nutrition, or some other type disease or not enough growth hormone. We don't want to become spiritual uh, deficient people. That's why we uh, covet being in the presence of God. That's why we long to hear the word of the Lord that we can be spiritually strong and do exploits in his name. The Iron Man of Baseball, Lou Gehrig, 1903 to 1941. He played his first, played first base from 1925 to 1939, 15 years for the New York Yankees. Lou played first base. And he had a lifetime batting average of 340. He hit 493 home runs. Lou Gehrig had home runs in seven World Series games. He played 2,130 straight games without missing a game. Lou Gehrig's record stood until 1995 when Carl, Carl Whitman Jr. broke his record. When Lou Gehrig retired, they x-rayed his hands. Every finger had been broken at least once, some twice, some three breaks in one finger. Lou Gehrig played and never missed a game. Lou Gehrig knew how to play even when he hurt. Amen. Amen. Oh, today I want to tell you that God is with you. That God is for you. And he is not against you. Great men and women don't quit. Great men and women learn to play and to pray and to go forward when life is tough and difficult. They don't quit because there's a mountain to climb or a stream to cross. Hebrews 10, 36, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. I plan to receive what God has promised. I don't plan on giving up until I receive what God has promised me, and I believe you feel the same. There are reasons, several reasons that Many people never receive what God has promised them, but I'm going to focus on three of them today. 
One, they don't perceive, they, their, their perspective gets blocked, cannot perceive what God's plan is. Secondly, because our progress isn't always obvious, sometimes we don't understand that we are standing is really going forward many times. Number three, this is the third reason we stop short, because the progress or the process is open-ended, not so clearly defined. Amen. With God, you are unstoppable. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Possibly some have found themselves in the valley of decision of whether to go forward or to back up. Maybe some have said, I feel like quitting. Well, I don't mean dying. I mean the battle has become so fierce. Amen. Too long and too hard. Or maybe you have given up on your dreams and aspirations or affecting our world or even affecting your own family. And although may I, I may not know the specifics of your situation, I feel like that God has given me something to help you today to get back up to get your strength in I saw in prayer yesterday I saw some that were literally drained it's like they had nothing left in them oh they love God still but their spiritual stamina their spiritual strength had leaked from them God's going to restore you today I come to fill your heart with hope because God is not through with you yet I believe your best days are still ahead of you. I want to talk to those that have stopped short of God's promises. I want to talk to somebody that's wore out mentally, emotionally, maybe physically. But God can make you a promise that you never possess if you never learn how to persevere. I want to put a persevering spirit on you today. I want to pray today that there's a perseverance that comes on you, a strength that's beyond what you ever imagined. So I want to speak to you today who know in your heart that you have stopped short. You used to be a dreamer. You used to live vibrantly. You used to live with stamina, with, with uh, some significance. But today you feel like that you're barely, barely living. God wants to put something inside of you. Amen. Something that will help you to go against the tide. Something that will help you stand when others are falling. Amen. Maybe something has faded in your memories. You forgot where God brought you from. You forgot the great price that he paid. You forgot the day that you were baptized in his name. You forgot the day when you came to an old-fashioned altar. You forgot the day when you began to speak in that heavenly language as he filled you with his spirit. Joshua, the sixth chapter, tells us a great story. It's an interesting chapter because it describes how God's people had to conquer a land that had been granted to them. A land that had been given to them. It was theirs, but yet they weren't yet living there. Oh, I've told the Lord at times, I wish you would take the dream away almost, because if you're not going to help me accomplish it, then it's always out there. I, I, I continue to see the dream, but it seems like I'm not making the progress to get to the dream. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. Amen. The scripture says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and heavenly places in the Lord. So whatever it is that Jesus is supposed to be working in my life, today I want him to work in my life. Would you raise your hands and say, I want you to work in my life, Lord. The peace and the joy of the Lord, the strength of God is all supposed to be working in my life. The fruits of the Spirit are supposed to be evident in my life, but I wonder if it's showing through my frown, if it's showing through my heaviness. Amen. Because God promised it does not mean that I, or that we, possess it. Joshua 6, we get to see God's people as they're about to take possession. 6 and 1 again. The gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out, 
No one came in. Then the Lord said to, to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark on the seventh day. On the seventh day. Oh, there's something about living for the Lord day one. Day two, it's been 10 years, Lord. It's been 15 years, Lord. It's been 17 years, Lord. Maybe it's been 17 days, but I'm still in the battle. I'm still in the war. I'm still a soldier in the kingdom of God. On the seventh day, I don't know the day your miracle's coming. I don't know how it's all going to come together, but on the seventh day, March around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. And when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Amen. Shout now because the walls are coming down. Amen. We want to shout the walls down. We want in every time we're in his presence that hell goes on red alert because when we shout the name of Jesus, hell fears and trembles at his name. Some of us say, I want my miracle today. I don't know when our miracle, or oh, we've had plenty of them, and to, tomorrow night we're going to talk about a lot of things, and I hope you're here. But, but today, some can't shout yet. Before you shout, you've got to go around six days, six times, around the same mountain, around the same city, around the same valley, it seems. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go straight in. But Israel, amen, you finally are going to get what God started promising to Abraham and then to Isaac and then to Jacob. And finally, you're going to get what Moses never got to enter because he didn't go into the promised land. He only led the people to Egypt. Amen. Joshua, you're finally going to go in, but first you've got to march, to march through the grueling process of life through the battles and the difficulties and the challenges and the temptations and the storms of life. Get up tomorrow and march again. Get up Tuesday morning and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Get up Wednesday morning and get up tomorrow. Get up every day and say, I'm going to march forward because if God is for me, who can be against me? I don't expect them to understand. I don't expect them to understand, but it's I, my will and my plan to follow the will and purpose of God. Hallelujah. There are three reasons why they had to march for six days. Well, there are many reasons, but three that specifically I'd like to focus on. I notice that so many people never receive what God has promised because they give up. Anybody can give up. Anybody. If we had 12 buildings this size would not hold the people that in the 33 years that I preached to that started out but somewhere they became overtaken with a fault somewhere the adversary got the upper hand with them but I preach to you today don't ever give up don't ever sell your birthright don't ever believe the lie of the enemy so many have not received what God has given, has promised them because they don't persevere. Well, Pastor, would you define persevere to make sure that I know what you're saying? It means to continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty, with little or no prospect of success. When you can't really see a great amount of success, I like traveling on our interstates that are marked mile 101, mile 102, 
mile 103, you can see you're making progress. Sometimes in the kingdom of God, it's the violent ticket by force. And there's other times that when we've done all we can do, we just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. We're not here to make markers. Amen. We're here to stand fast and move forward and march toward the calling of God in our lives. Number one, our perspective gets, gets blocked. Most of us have heard of the, Josh, uh, the, 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 the Joshua and the battle of Jericho song. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. We as kids sang that and it was so powerful and it just seemed like it was so simple and they marched and all of a sudden the walls fell down. Amen. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. That's what he did. But it's another thing to live it. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to get up every day. Fought the battle. The walls came tumbling down. Some of the walls that I've faced didn't just come down. Some of the battles that you and I have faced didn't just get over overnight. We just marched around them laughing and, and joyously singing. I want to tell you, it's where the rubber meets the road, the challenges of life. I'm preaching today. Don't ever give up, no matter how difficult it is, no matter whether you see progress or no progress. If Joshua heard us sing the song, he, he might be upset. I appreciate you honoring me, but you have no clue. You're laughing. Amen. You're just singing that lightly. But oh, when the storms come, when opposition comes, when temptation comes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jericho was the first city in the promised land that God's people had to take before they could ever have everything that God wanted to give them as an inheritance. So it was the first. Often the first battle is the hardest battle. How many of you know that getting started is the hardest part sometimes? Setting new routines and new habits and new commitments and we say them and New Year's is coming pretty soon and hopefully there'll be a lot of people that say, I, I'm going to change some things and I, I'm going to set some new goals, but it's easy to set the goals. It's hard to follow through with them. Amen, amen. Well, you, you want me to make it real? I, I will. How about the gym? Yes. I'm not sure how many signed up for the gym last year. We had COVID, but I, I would guess that there's going to be a lot of people that's saying, you know, there's some adjustments that's got to be made in my <coughs> waistline, and, and there's some things that I'm going to change. And <coughs> it was pretty easy to sign up. They'll give you a month or two free, and this feels good. I'm not even paying. And I, I'm telling you, honey, I am going to get this body in shape this year. Right. You and 98% of those that don't ever return to the gym. Amen. 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 Starting is the hardest part. part. Amen. So what it doesn't tell you is that he spent 40 years in the wilderness. Wondering because the generation before didn't have enough faith to go in. I wonder about the generation that follows us. Will they say, oh, they were steadfast. Oh, they were committed. Oh, there wasn't an up and down. There wasn't hypocrisy in their life. They were committed. It may have been 40 years. It may have been a long time, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed of bacon for bread. God was with me in the valley. He was with me on the mountaintop. He had waited 40 years to even get the opportunity to go into Jericho. Joshua would say, this is not as simple as it sounds. Somebody would say today, nobody knows like I know what the Lord has done for me. Nobody knows the valleys. Nobody knows the, the battles that I've had. Amen, I've been in this way. And somebody said, you need to get out of the way and let the Lord have his way. Sometimes when we see somebody else's victory, we oversimplify their process. Oh, if I had their hold, I'd turn my hold loose. If I had my life, you have no clue 
what they've gone through to get where they are. Amen. It's not easy. It's not for the faint-hearted. Amen. He fought the battle, and the walls didn't just come down. It was a long time. Actually, it went the other way around because Jericho was not a very big city. And Jericho was actually a small city that you could march around in about an hour. It wasn't that Jericho was such a big city that made it challenging for them to conquer. It was Jericho's walls that were so high because some of the stuff that they, that, that's not happening in your life, some of the stuff that God has promised you and you haven't received yet, that stuff that you're intimidated by, it's not that it, you can't march around it because you can almost smell it, but it's always somebody else that's getting the victory. But God gave me a word to tell you today, keep marching. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare allow the demon spirits that used to control your life to have access to you because you're discouraged, because you're dismayed, because you're exhausted, because you're spiritually drained and depleted it's not that it's really bigger than you because God is in you he's bigger than anything that you and I face it's just that your perspective gets blocked on how high the walls are and I'm going to tell you if you don't feed this body for seven days you begin to become very weak you go 12 days or 14 days and you're holding on to something as you walk by. All of the facilities are still working, but there's a fatigue, there's a weariness that's in you because you didn't get the proper nutrition. And spiritually, when you go for a few days and you say, I'm fine, Pastor. I still love the Lord. I'm, I'm doing everything's fine. But spiritually, you are draining out and there's nothing left to fight the battle. And if we're not careful, after we are depleted, we can't see the victory. Our perspective changes because we have closed the door to our spiritual strength. That's why you were so wise to climb out of bed this morning, jump in that shower, put on your clothes, get in your car, and come to church. Amen. You had every reason that you would think of to not be here, every excuse rather, but here you made a decision and what a great decision. Because one of the great things about getting to God's house, it lifts your perspective. We come in one way and we see beyond the walls where we are in life, it will begin to close in on us and anxiety and fear and our perspective of who we are and who God is and everything begins to crowd us but when we're in the presence of God, God begins to shove that stuff back. The word of God comes across clear and plain. Worship begins to elevate us. God's house is that place that lifts your perspective to see beyond the walls of your problems. It lifts your perspective to see beyond the obstacles and the opposition. The enemy is a liar, liar, pants on fire. He will feed your mind. He will feed your emotions if you allow him. And the old stuff becomes a new thing again if we're not careful. That's why we've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so as long as you're looking at just the walls in life, as long as that's what most of us spend six days a week facing the walls of life, looking at walls, looking at setbacks, looking at deficits, looking at children problems, looking at our spouse and the negative parts that we see of people's lives, looking at our past, looking at walls, looking at problems, looking at the negative stuff, hearing the negative stuff, speaking the negative stuff, we become negative people losing our perspective when you come to church here's something that I love about worship I love about our praise team our musicians that they're excited they're anointed 
They help usher us into the presence of God. I love when we come into this place and, and they practice, they've done everything right. They've been in the prayer rooms. They've lived a holy life. They come into this place and they lead us into the presence of God and all of that heaviness begins to be shaken off as you begin to lift your hands that are weary and your heart that it seems to be heavy and you begin to get into his presence. Why won't you clap your hands into the Lord even now? No later than this week, I was telling someone that God had showed me their heart and, and, and some of the heaviness and emptiness. I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a prayer at warrior. I want you to find an intercessor of that tablet right there, my brother. Get close to them. Get in the prayer room. Get by them. There may not be a prayer in your heart. You may not be able to pray anything. Just get close to them because they're praying. That stuff will get off on you. When you haven't prayed for weeks or months, get close to somebody that's praying because they've already built a channel. They've already knocked down the wall. How do you know that, Pastor? Because coming up, the rough side of the mountain, coming up, some difficult days in my life. Coming up when there wasn't any prayer in me, it looked like the devil was winning. I could find a prayer room where one of my brothers was praying. Amen, Joe, amen, to myself. Get in that prayer room. I don't feel like praying. I don't want to pray. Get in that prayer room and just sit beside some intercessor and the prayer is gonna start coming back to you because they're gonna open the door. I'm preaching to somebody today. If you don't have it, get with somebody that does have it. If you don't feel it, get with somebody that does feel it. Tell them, get me by the hand. Amen. Run me around the building. Shout with me. Do whatever you've got to do. I can't die in my dilemma. Amen. Amen. Worship. Start praising him. I don't feel it. Amen. He deserves it. Well, Pastor, I made some mistakes. I can't, really, I can't be a hypocrite. That's a lying devil that wants to tell you that he's worthy whether you are or not. He's worthy whether you made a mistake or not. Worship precedes the miraculous. Worship precedes the miraculous. If you can begin to worship over top of that burden, over top of that negativity, over top of the walls that are climbing, coming in on you. When you praise God with other people, it reminds you that you're not alone. Amen. If you praise him in the morning when nobody's there, he'll be there when everybody's there. You're not alone. Tell somebody beside you, you're not alone. Amen. There are other people that are pursuing God with me. Don't stop praying. I stand before you today because of a praying mother and a praying father. Don't ever stop praying for your child. Don't ever stop praying for a lost loved one. Don't ever stop praying for a companion. Pray for them. Amen. Amen. Something about making an effort to get into God's presence. It will help to elevate your perspective that you can see past the lie of the enemy because he is a sly old fox. When you see past your problems, you can see what the enemy, a man that was intimidating you, was actually intimidated by you all along. You see, he knows that you and God are greater than anything he could do. That's why he knows the Bible more than we do because he remembers there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper if you will go in my name. No matter how weak you are, no matter how feeble you are, no matter how defeated you are, if you can get up out of that bed, out of that weariness, out of that battle long enough to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
Oh, get up one more time. You say, I've lost the glory. I haven't felt God's presence. I haven't spoken tongues in a long time. If you can just get up, he's lied to you. He's pulled depression on you. But you say in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rabbi. The gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in. No one came out. Then in verse 2, the Lord says to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Those verses don't go together. I'm going to show you why. My problem with verse 2 is that verse 1, because God tells Joshua, See, I have given you the city. First of all, only God can speak in past tense about a battle that you haven't even fought yet. That's how strong God is. That's how big God is. That's how God, confident God is in his own ability. I say to you today, God's got this. Whatever it is, God's got this. Whatever you're facing, God's got this. He's already in your tomorrows. He's already in your future. He said, we, we haven't even started the first round. But listen to this. But I've given it to you because I live outside of time, God was saying. And I'm not stressed about what you're stressed about. And I'm not overcome what you're overcome with. Amen. I'm not taking Prozac here in heaven. There is no panic attacks in heaven. I already have it under control. I have all power. All power is in my name. You hear me? You are a child of God. There is nothing that can stop you if you just get back up again. Say, I want that anointing again. I want that vision again. I want the gifts to operate again. I have a plan. He's saying today he has a plan for your life. Amen. Or you say, I know he has a plan for him and him and her and her. No, he has a plan for your life. It's our will that gets in the way of his will. Amen. He's worked things out because his purpose will prevail if we can find his will. Anything you want, you can see over the walls. Any time you want, you can see past the obstacles. Verse 2, he says, See, I've given Jericho into your hands. Verse 1, it says, The gates of Jericho were securely barred. So God says, See, I can't see. I can't see. All I can see is bills. All I can see is heaviness. All I can see is a lost loved one. All I can see is on my job and my boss. And I can see a broke down car. All I can see. And Jesus is saying, oh, if you will allow me to help you, you'll see past that valley. You'll see past that mountain. You'll see past that obstacle. Because faith will take a life. Faith will become a life. You begin to speak to that mountain. Mountain! Be thou removed and cast into the sea. I see my son walking in the spirit. I see my daughter saved. I see my family overcoming. I see my bills paid. I see myself debt free. I see the anointing returning. Joshua said, all I see is walls. All I see is problems. Amen. All I see is locked up in the walls. And we felt like our life doesn't match up with what God has said. You said, Pastor, I paid my tithe. I didn't give it to some charity over there. I put it, as you said, in the house of God. I give offerings liberally. I've sowed into the kingdom of God. But here's where I am. I want you to tell God. He said, remind me of his promises that I have been faithful. Watch him overtake you. Amen. Defeat comes to the mind first. You ever felt like that God was speaking to you about healing? Healing. Physical healing, yes. Emotional healing. Healing of a broken heart. Healing from things that nobody knows anything about. The enemy would say, you got to live with that. 
It's like a recorder. He plays it over and over in your mind. Do you know that God wants to heal that? That God wants to take away that brokenness? That God wants to rebuild trust? That you'll trust people again? Amen. 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 Sometimes we wonder, does his word match up with where we are? God is instructing us to give something away because he always returns it with something good. You know this, you've heard pastors say this, and I thank you for a long time. You've heard my stories over and over. Until the Lord gives me new ones, I'll just have to keep telling the old ones. <laughs> but there's been many times, there's times on my sofa, I couldn't get off the sofa. I was so sick. Maybe not in a sense of a flu, but just so overwhelmed that I couldn't get off call my wife, call Brother Rod, call some of the brethren, come and pray for me. The Spirit of the Lord would come on me. I'd come out here and preach and nobody would know. Amen. Amen. Many times not well in my body, but oh, as I began to minister to others, it would come on, it'd come on me. As I'd begin to pray for others, and God would show up in my life. What are you saying, Pastor? When you can't go on, when you feel like you're defeated, if you can find somebody and pray for them, when you feel like I need somebody to be praying for me. It's amazing how God works. Amen, amen, amen. Reality sometimes doesn't match revelation, it seems. That's the situation for Joshua, and his perspective is blocked. That's why God sends you pastors to help give you divine direction. Number two, we stop short because our progress isn't always obvious and it's obvious I'm not going to get through with this message unless you brought your lunch today. <clears throat> so God speaks to who said that's okay. Thank you. Stay right here. I'll just preach right on. So God speaks to Joshua. He says, march around the walls for six days. Seventh day, march seven times. It's going to be awesome. The walls are going to come down. Pastor, I've heard you preach faith, 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 but my walls are still up. Keep standing. Keep pursuing the mark of the high calling of God. So Joshua summoned the priest and said to them to take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry the trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army in advance and march around the city with armed guards going ahead of the ark of the Lord. And they get this instruction to start marching. And now verse 8. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward blowing their trumpets and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. So they're making progress, right? Doesn't it feel good to make progress? Yeah. Feels good. Yeah. Just to see things going in the right direction in your life feels good. It wasn't a big raise, but at least it was a raise. Amen. Progress on our job. Progress that I've gotten my first apartment. Progress I got my first rental house. Progress that I, I think I've qualified for a loan for a home. And progress when we, we move forward. Got this bad yard fixed up. More than just weeds. Got a little bit of grass now. And amen. I'm not debt free, but I, at least I paid off that credit card at high interest. Our personal goals. The armed guard in verse 9 marched ahead of the priest who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark and all this time the trumpets were sounding but Joshua had commanded the army to not even give a war cry do not even raise your voices do not say a word until I tell you to shout and then shout so he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city circling it once then the army returned at camp and spent the night there. And Joshua got up the next morning and the priests took the ark up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. And the armed men went ahead and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So the second day they marched around the city once and returned to camp. They did this for six days. We know the story, but it's important to hear. I want you to feel what these men felt, what these men were going through 
about to charge into a city, about to wage a war. But all they ended up doing for six days straight was taking a walk. It just didn't happen. I believe you, man of God. I trust you, man of God. But I don't know how long we can keep doing this. I mean, we're just really basically taking a walk. Uh, it, it's nothing life changing here. And most of us need to see something to happen to motivate us. Most of us need to see the needle move a little bit to, to motivate us. I don't mind work, working hard. I don't mind sacrificing, we typically say. I don't mind putting up with stuff. But I need to know through my pain there is a purpose. I need to know that through my suffering, surely something good is going to come out of it. Amen. I need to know that there's a point to what I'm going through. But the Bible doesn't say they walked around the first day and a little bit of the wall fell down and they walked the second day and more of the wall fell down. Amen. That would have been so naturally motivating to them because they've seen it happening. They've seen miracles, signs, and wonders happening in front of them amen we're progressing it's happening I knew it was the Lord but in the middle of that probably was someone saying I don't I don't really know amen amen fighting men well equipped men amen come home to your family after the first night How, how's it going amen are we going in what's it like there oh it's amazing my strong warrior, amen. Is the city ours yet? As well, I said, baby, we, we didn't fight today. It's kind of more like spring training, like a preseason deal. We, we just went for a walk, but tomorrow, I bet tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be the day. I think Joshua just wants us to get acclimated to the conditions and, and muscles stretched out. and We get the vision of what's going to happen. And so uh, you come home day two amen and that same thing for six days well that's not that long because it's it's been a long time uh, waiting in the wilderness 40 years now we're looking at victory but we can't go in it seems to always be an obstacle that is there when we're right at the door we're right at the gate we're right about to have breakthrough second day amen how was it? How was your day? Third day. She expects you to sit down. Amen. Talk about it. Because women like to talk about it. We want it. It was fine. What do you mean it was fine? Tell me about your day. Oh, it was a good day. We had a good day. I mean, a good day. Just tell me, where, did you go somewhere? Oh, baby, we, we went to. We, we run out. Amen. 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 Somebody needs to talk to Joshua, babe. We're, we're not doing anything. There's nothing happening, babe. There's nothing to tell you. We're just doing this. I'm just following these guys around. We've been doing this. What do you mean? I'm just telling you, somebody needs to talk to Joshua. He told us all we had to keep our mouths shut. It's not too hard, but after a while, we want to say something. And he told us we couldn't say anything and, and just march in silence. And it's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing there's no women there because we would be all in trouble. That may not be true, but <clears throat> amen, amen. Why did Joshua tell them not to talk while they were marching? I think because he knew that 40 years early it was what the spies said about their situation that kept them from receiving God's promises. God's ways are perfect, always perfect. And he knew that, that when it comes to receiving God's promise, your mouth is often your worst enemy. So our thoughts are often our worst enemy as well. And sometimes we've got to talk to people. We've got to get advice. We've got to express ourselves how we feel. Sometimes the best strategy is to talk less and walk more. Three days, four days, five days, six days, still nothing. Amen. I've been holding on. What should I do, Pastor? Hold on. You know how God told Joshua after six days on the seventh day, then the walls are going to fall flat? We, we remember that. We, we held that from the very beginning. 
And guess what Joshua did not tell the people? He didn't say a single word about how long they were going to be doing this. Read it. He didn't tell them how long. It was a walk of faith. It was a journey of faith. Joshua gets the people. He says in advance, march and keep your mouths shut. And I'll tell you when we get there. Amen. He said he doesn't tell them how long. He doesn't tell them how many laps. So it's not like they can say, oh, wow, we're making progress. It's the fifth day. We only have two more days. What are you preaching, Pastor? I'm saying nobody knows how long your storm has been. Nobody knows exactly when that's going to end. But I will tell you, the sun is going to shine again. And God's favor is going to be accomplished if you will shake off that deadness if you'll shake off that heaviness if you'll begin to worship him like the victory has already come amen amen the third reason amen we stop short is because the process is open-ended when i walked through the woods many 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 years of my life and prayer time best time was in the woods, miles and miles of just woods. It would have been very, very disheartening if when I walked and I continued to walk, and I was at the end, but there was really no end. There was no place that I could say, wow, I've run out of room. It just kept on. Sometimes we need something to help pace ourselves but that's what happens in the house of God. We begin to feel, ooh, I feel strength. I feel growth. I've heard that word before. Now it really has a meaning to me. I've heard it before. But th there is something about the steps of a man that are a godly man or woman that God said, I'm going to order their steps. I'm going to order their steps. I'm going to allow my spirit to flow inside of them. Amen. I don't know how to tell you, but I will tell you this, that God said he would not allow more on you than you can bear. Never, never allow more on you than you can bear. I remember as a young man, I remember, I remember some of the battles that I had. Uh, you remember some of the battles you had. I remember some of the conversations I had with God. I don't know how long I can take this. I don't know if I could take this anymore. But there was something that he lifted up to standard right at the right time. He sent an angel before me. He cleared the way. He made a way that I could be strong and stand. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? I've got walls that I can't see over. You've got walls that you can't see over. But there's a God today that's telling you that this is a walk of faith. Would you just lift your hands in his presence right now? That this is a walk not of sight, but it's a walk of faith. I can't even see what I'm pursuing, maybe at times, or maybe you can't even see what you're fighting for. You feel like you're almost shadow boxing. And it's okay to say, I've got problems. And it seems like I have no progress. And there are times we can say, I'm marching, but nothing is happening. But there's a theory that the reason the walls didn't fall down a little bit at a time because God didn't want Joshua and the men to trust in their own efforts of progress. But it was a walk of faith. He wanted them to have faith in his promise. And can I tell you today, one of the greatest things you can do is that you've got to out of bed again and say, I still believe. I still believe. Though the enemy seems to be wild and rampant, my faith is not in the signs on the wall, but it's in the word of the Lord. Would you clap your hands unto him?